Uh, welcome to this training called How to Hire Two A Players, Two Superstars in the Next 30 Days. It's a very ambitious title, but I have the right team with me to deliver you on that promise. So I don't do these webinars with uh, live webinars with guests often, but when I do, I want to make sure that I only bring the very best to our community. So my guest today uh, is the Team Hire team. I have Dave Williams, Andy, and Brett. Uh, you guys can say what's up. Cole's going on. All Good right. Afternoon. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Everybody's uh, mic is working perfect. So they are going to be the ones uh, leading this presentation today. And they're going to go through a few components that have to do with hiring. And, and then towards the end, they're going to go over uh, what they do at Team Hired and how they can help you and your agency bring on two superstars in the next 30 days. And if you're an agency owner, then you know that the hardest part in running an insurance agency, by far the hardest part, is finding good sales team members. Anybody can find an average B or C player, uh, but finding A players is extremely difficult, but it's not impossible. And what I like about Team Hired and why I had them come on board is because they don't just preach about this theoretical concept. Uh, Dave, as you guys saw in the email, at his peak had over 50 team members working in his agency. And there were a lot of people who reached out asking him how he's doing that. And then one thing led to another, uh, Team Hired was born and he'll give you the background on that. And since then, they've helped over a thousand people or a thousand agencies hire great team members. And when you help a handful of agents, then sure, that's, that's cool. When you've helped over a hundred agents, then you have a process in place. But if you've crossed over a thousand people like Team Hired has uh, done, then you've mastered the craft. And in 2020, when most businesses contracted and they shut down, they stopped hiring, Team Hired went the opposite way. They exponentially grew. And um, that's why I want to bring them on board today because they have a really cool process that they're going to share. So Dave, I'll kick it to you, uh, yeah. go ahead and uh, take it from here. And then I'll, um, ask that everybody write their questions in the Q and a or in the chats, I'll take note of them. And at the very end, we'll go through those one by one. Dave, take it away. All right. So my name is uh, David Williams, and uh, I'll start with just a, a real brief background. I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of my background. So I actually started in the insurance industry back in 2009. I used to be a, a store manager executive at Circuit City. I ran a $20 million superstore, managed about 60 team members. And uh, towards the end of that, I ended up going off on disability for about you know six months with some um, you know severe health challenges forced myself to come back to work before I was ready. And then uh, was obviously in a tough financial position at the time. And then literally three, four months later, Circuit City announced they're going chapter 11. So here I was not in the best health, broke, and uh, I was going to be without a job in 90 days. And I had to figure something else out. And my father was always an entrepreneur. I always had an entrepreneurial spirit. And uh, I decided that you know, doctors were telling me at the time with my condition and everything that, hey, you know what, you might want to consider long term disability. I knew I had to create a life on my own path. I was going to do things on my own terms. So I knew I wanted to start something up on my own. And I had a friend of the family that was in the insurance business with Allstate Insurance and um, seemed like a really good gig. They seemed like they were doing well. And uh, I decided I was going to go all in, start to get my licensing at night while they're shutting down Circuit City. The only barrier to entry I had is I was broke at the time and didn't have the capital. And uh, when the liquidators came in, to Circuit City, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise. What they told me was all the open merchandise, all the customer returns, they just wanted to blow it out for pennies on the dollar. So that was my aha moment. My light bulb went off and I was like, what if I made it easy on you? And I just bought up all the inventory from every Circuit City store uh, within three hours of here. And what kind of deal could we do? I took the last seven grand of my name out of my 401k. I bought up about maybe $70,000, $80,000 worth of electronics. I arbitraged it online paid off my debt, raised the capital I needed for my first insurance agency. And we came in just, you know, keeping the main thing, the main thing, focus on revenue, 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 customer experience, acted as if somebody was trying to take it away from us 24 hours a day, hired my first two team members by me. We, you know, we quickly grew our first location about two and a half million in revenue. We did another location, built that to 5 million in revenue, did another one, built that to 9 million in revenue, ended up fast forward 10 years later, 
growing our business mainly organically up to, upwards about $20 million recurring revenue. And we had a lot of team members at that time at our peak. to what you said earlier, we had upwards near 50 team members between licensed sales professionals and our team of telemarketers and our managers team leads. And um, we had a few of them on development plans that eventually owned their own agencies. And it got to the point where they were ready. And uh, it was to me, I was ready for some, you know, next things in, uh, in, in, in my career. So we ended up transitioning off, sold my locations to them. And as I was trying to figure out, you know, what, what is the next thing that I want to do that I wanted to be all mine? What big problems are out in the world today? Another light bulb went off. And, you know, one of the biggest challenges that I had, and I think was the, the, the paramount of our success was having a dynamic hiring process in place where we always had a bench of people at any given point in time. So we were ready to grow with the right talent. And I noticed everybody in the insurance world, you know, struggled with that and had a people problem. You know, I myself had multiple people problems throughout my career. I, I know most businesses in America had a people problem. And we had a very interesting uh, process in terms of hiring that uh, really expedited the hiring process, dialed it in, but also I knew something that, that a lot of people didn't realize because sometimes we get into our business and we develop these blinders and we don't understand maybe some of the things around us that we can control in what seems like an uncontrollable environment, right? So a lot of us, including myself at one time, you know, thought, hey, there's no quality candidates out there. Hey, there's not enough candidates out there. But what we uncovered when digging down that they out there and exist, but in different job environments, sometimes we got to tweak some of the things that we can control to really put ourselves in a real competitive position in the marketplace to get that top talent. And one of the things that we, we came up with, what we call our three C's, and in a moment here, I'm going to hand it over to our sales directors, Andy and uh, Brett, that work for us over at Team Hire, that's going to kind of dive into some valuable info for you guys today and a little bit about what we do. But what we came up with was with the three C's because we did dozens and dozens of exit interviews with these candidates because we wanted to find out real world, what is going on? Why are they ghosting? Why are they not showing up to interviews? Why are they not taking the position? And we called them up and said, listen, we want 100% transparency out of you because we're trying to get better. We're trying to learn what prevented you from moving forward. What stopped you from taking this career and what caused you to maybe take this opportunity over this one. And it came down to three things almost 98% of the time. And those three things were, again, what we came up with is our three C's that came down to compensation, culture, and career path. And what it was on the compensation front is a lot of times it wasn't competitive enough for the market. So when they're coming in, maybe jumping, they, their eyes were, they're were jumping in through some hoops to get their license, which a lot of them were willing to do. But the number wasn't there competitive enough in comparison to what some other opportunities look like in their eyes were like similar opportunities where they're maybe making more money with an easier barrier of entry. Another piece was we had some people that they may have had the competitive pay plan, but it, it was too complex. It wasn't simple enough to understand where the candidate could take it, go home to their significant other and spouse and somebody outside the insurance industry be able to really articulate on a one sheet piece of paper, how they can make a really great living in this industry. A lot of what we found and some of the feedback was, you know, there was five page comp plans. There was all these complexities to it where the candidates really didn't understand how they were going to make an income. So they didn't have the confidence needed to move forward. The next piece was culture. You know, a lot of times, you know, I've been a victim of this myself. You know, we walk into our same office environments day after day after day, and we forget about the little things. But when a candidate comes into our business the first time, the biggest thing they're paying attention to is first impressions is all the little things. How do the desks look? How is the lighting? How is the atmosphere? Is there positive buzz going where everybody's amped, jazz, ready to go? Where, you know, you think about it, the average candidate, they're probably spending more time in your office environment than they are with their own families. So they want to make sure that when they're committing that type of time day in and day out, that it's really a great environment where maybe they don't even feel like it's work because they got that family atmosphere, that camaraderie, that energy. The last piece that I found that was really missing was the long-term career path. You know, that's obviously, you know, important to us. That's important to most candidates. And we found a lot of people, were, you know, were hiding that, afraid. Well, I don't want somebody to come in they do too good. And then they want to just open up their own agency. That was the thing that made us most successful was we embraced that. We made that a part of our culture. We made it a part of our model. And we put that out there to people 
that this is one of the best business opportunities in America. Whether you're looking to go to Google, Amazon, no matter where you want to go, where else could you go if you come in and work really hard, climb the ladder, do all the right things, you can get mentored in two, three, four years down the line, depending on what your progression timeline looks like. You could potentially buy maybe a four, five million dollar book of business. You pay that down over five years and let's say you don't even grow it a policy and you just maintain it. You pay that off over 10 years, you have an asset that's worth a million dollars and you just became a millionaire and you just became the 1% of the 1% in America. What other opportunity, what other you know, place can somebody go to do that? And I found a lot of people were scared to do that because they're scared of losing people, but that exact fear was causing them not to get the right people or not to retain the people. And that was one of the biggest ways we found great talent, we developed great talent, and we maintained them for five, six, seven years until they eventually went off on their own to own their own agencies. We probably had about a, a dozen or so people that spun off that own their own agencies. And as people in our environment and our culture saw that, that lit a fire underneath them to operate up here the entire time that they worked for me. And then, oh, by the way, before they went off like to, to do that, we had a bench of people that were developed underneath them. But by having these components with the three C's, we found that changed the game. And when we got the right person in front of them, we now had the right offer and the right way to present them an opportunity where that made a whole lot of sense and they wanted to move forward in our own organization. So that's you know a little bit about me, a little bit about my background, a little bit about what we discovered and what we do at Team Hired. And that, that's exactly what we do is we, we're, we, we consult first to make sure somebody's got the right foundation in place. And then once we do that, but like we cut down the timeline of hiring, you know, exponentially. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to right now turn it over to Andy and turn it over to Brett. And they're going to dive a little bit more into, you know, some additional best practices we've seen really win in this challenging uh, job environment right now. Because there's obviously, you know, we're seeing a lot of things, right? A lot of people want to work virtually in a virtual world. There's fewer and far between great quality candidates out there because there's so much competition I think the last statistic I saw was what, like 9.6 million open jobs in America. That's a lot of competition there competing for the same top talent that's out there in the marketplace. And there's a lot of people getting paid more than they ever got paid to stay home. So it's, it's a different dynamic. And we feel we've cracked the code during this challenging environment. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to my, my counterparts here, Andy and Brett. Hey everybody, my name is Brett Schickler. I'm one of the directors of the sales over here and wow, I could run a mile after hearing you talk, Dave. I absolutely love that. <laughs> Um, but I just want to go ahead and share some, you know, obstacles that we're seeing currently in the current job market. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this uh, screen shared now. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through this. I'm also going to arm you with some arrows in the quiver to walk away from today. So whether you decide to move forward with Team Hired or not, you've got some value, you've got some new strategies to start implementing immediately so that you can find your two A players in the next 30 days. And more importantly, you're not wasting time on pointless interviews. So without further ado, we're going to get into this. First thing that we tend to see is very common hiring challenges. Uh, across the board, I think we all have a lack of time. Uh, some of us have a lack of experience. Most business owners that we know, they simply don't have the time that's required to source, interview, and vet the right candidates for the open positions. Now, this is a huge, huge understatement, I think, because at the end of the day, your time is so valuable. And I know how many hats everyone on this call is wearing. The fact that you got to run the agency, coach and mentor your sales team, the fact that you're looking to hit your goals. On top of this, we quickly find ourselves becoming a full-time recruiter. So just looking to potentially you know, outsource those solutions um, is always a great way to help leverage your time. We are seeing high turnover. I think that this is a very... Uh, a uh, very common challenge across the United States right now. We're seeing uh, more folks than ever on the open job market due to, you know, being let go or those types of things, even in a difficult market. So our job is to help you identify those top performers much faster and easier in your process. We also have a lack of quality candidates to uh, actually meet with and professional interviewers. So this is going to actually stem from a I think a problem that a lot of us face, we all want to believe the best in people. And when we get somebody in front of us that tells us all the right things, they know all the right things to say in the interview, but when we put them on the phone, they have call reluctance or a bad attitude. So we got to find creative ways to kind of weed those people out or identify those red flags early on in the process. 
because the high cost of a wrong hire is very substantial. The time, resources, and marketing that it requires to find these candidates is higher than ever. We all know that candidates are sitting at home, they're collecting double unemployment. A lot of them are making it look like they're looking for work. And if we do find somebody we're interested in, we have to make sure that it's not the wrong hire. What's the cost of the wrong hire? Well, it's not just going to impact that one person. You'll see a, a dramatic drop in the team performance due to one bad hire. That damage to the company culture is something that's very hard to reverse and undo. So we want to help you identify those red flags. We want to see those character traits shine through and allow you to make the best decision possible. The damage to the company's reputation from interaction with a bad employee. Um, this is something that you know goes far beyond even just your business and the you know culture that you're building in your uh, your operation. It's also going to stem and trickle throughout the community. And that's something that we really, really, really need to avoid. So we want to make sure we have top performers, that they're constantly giving their best for your company. The cost to replace this person, on average, about 23 days. We also have, on average, about $25,000 in losses when you add up the job ads, how much time and energy you and your team are expending trying to find these people between job ads and interviews and reviewing resumes and extending job offers, not to mention the lost opportunity cost of having to replace this person or not having that team member uh, contributing to the team performance. We also see a large majority of good employees quit when their toxic coworker uh, jumps into the mix. Oops, sorry about that. So those are some of the challenges. We see people wasting time. We have a lack of quality candidates. We all know that time is a huge factor in this undertaking. So some effective ways to always be hiring. Uh, I want you guys to think creatively in this time, referrals from your best employees, friends, and clients. Uh, birds of a feather typically flock together. I think we've all heard that saying before and having a great internal referral program for your agency is one of the best ways to make sure that you're finding that next best employee to add to your team. Always having a bench ready and waiting. So Dave spoke to this and he was one of the best at this. Um, you know, I worked with him in his agency for quite a long time and I got to see this in action. So invest part of your marketing budget into a hiring sales support agents that can help to be, you know, support your top performers. So while you're grooming these individuals, they are actually contributing to your top performer success as well, while they're coming up through the ranks and learning those ropes. So maybe building a hierarchy where people can get an entry level access into this industry and the coaching and the tools necessary to train. So we've got some great tools. I can, I can speak to that real quick too. That. that was something Absolutely. that was pretty instrumental in our organization. So what we did again, to Brett's point, instead of putting all of our marketing dollars in with marketing vendors, you know, we still bought a lot of leads, but what we started doing is investing our marketing dollars in people. So we would bring somebody in, you know, that didn't have a license. We'd bring them in what we call the sales support role gave them a really dialed in script. We give them data, we give them the leads and we would tell them, they like, listen, you have to get licensed to work in this role anyway. So we're going to have you start you here. You can dictate how short term this position is. So if you come in 60, 90 days, you do all the right things, you crush it, you hit our metrics. And we had a goal of setting two live transfers an hour. We would assign on a one to two ratio, one sales support, essentially a telemarketer. We called it a sales support role, one sales support to two of our best people and we would tell our best people the price of admission for having this person do a lot of the heavy lifting and the dialing for you, generating the live transfers, is you need to mentor them into you one day. So we always had a, a bench ready and waiting. And if we promoted somebody, lost somebody unexpected, we had somebody that was relatively, you know, already groomed up in the ranks that could very easily slot into their position um, by doing it that way. So by putting our marketing dollars, you know, in, in, into people, and that really worked very well for us by having that bench. Thank you, Dave. Absolutely. Great point. I saw that in action day in and day out. And uh, once again, just an amazing, amazing method to make sure that you're getting the best of the best. Direct recruiting efforts. So always being on the lookout when you're out shopping uh, for products or services, keeping an eye out for those individuals providing exceptional customer service. So that individual that's got a great smile when you pull up to you know, pick up your food, that individual at the movie theater that's just got a great attitude, constantly being on the lookout for direct recruiting opportunities. And then being willing to adopt new tools and technology. Um, we have to implement technology in this ever-changing world. 
These types of platforms can give you a competitive advantage over your competitors, especially in the hiring space, if they're unwilling to adopt and change their methodology. <clears throat> Sorry, a slight technical issue here. All right, so next up, more effective ways to always be hiring. You can save time and advertising costs by outsourcing. So there's a cost to your time, we all know this. How much time does it take to find the average hire? Well, from what we see with our team and the scaled processes that we put in place, anywhere from 40 to 60 hours is typically required. So giving your time a value, a nice round number, which I'm sure everybody's time is worth more than this, but let's use $50 as an example. At 10 hours per week at 50 bucks an hour, we're spending $2,000 plus in our time alone. And that is energy and resources that could you know, probably be better spent on focusing in your business. We also have an average job spend of around $800 and the workload is still the agent's responsibility. So we need to find creative ways to outsource some of these responsibilities and allow us to really focus on what needs our attention. Leveraging LinkedIn and social media, direct outreach through targeted campaigns on LinkedIn and various social media platforms are always going to be a great way to engage with potential candidates. Um, we all know TikTok is becoming more popular. You can spread the word via engaging content. So you wanna try and create a brand image, a culture that attracts talent. Once again, I think back to you know, my experience in Dave's agency, and he was one of the best at creating a brand image. When I walked into that agency for the first time and I saw the glass walls, no doors, it felt like I was in Google. We had a studio. Now, I'm not saying you have to go to that length, but it definitely made an impression. And I think when you're trying to attract somebody that's a top performer, they wanna feel like they're part of something special. So just creating that image, is going to help you find the right employees because they're always going to flock to the right leader. And, and I can hit on that real quick culture. too, because I yes, think this was, this was really, this was another you know, critical component, I think in our organization that helped us grow, helped us find the right talent and maintain the right talent. So there became a, a, a time in my career where I, I had a ceiling, right? I was trying to grow. I was trying to get to that 20 million number. We we're trying to get our staff, but we had the ceiling and we weren't getting past it. And I actually went to a business conference. I went to a 10X conference. I heard a guy speak. His name was JJ. He ran the number one through seven Honda dealerships in um, the entire US. So here this guy was managing it. They own seven dealerships. And literally out of all Honda dealerships in the US, he was ranked number one through seven. That caught my attention. Like, what is this guy doing differently? He attributed the number one thing that got him there was non-compromising culture. He just built a culture that was so profound and protected the heck out of it and put in place what you know he called non-negotiables that really um, cemented their organization. And then that was another light bulb that went off for me. I needed to come back in and I knew there was some things that I was allowing in my organization that was preventing me from getting to where I needed to go. And to give you an example of that, we might've had some great producers, but some of those great producers maybe didn't have the right attitude that I was looking for. And I started to notice that that, you know, I bring new people in the organization. If I had people that were maybe perpetuating negativity or they weren't eating, living and breathing my uh, ideal culture, that's what was stunting us. And it was preventing some of our new people from getting where they needed to go. So I came up with what, you know, I call basically our, our, our commandments. And I think we came up with seven of them that were our non-negotiables. And we ended up rolling that out to the team and we didn't tell them you had to adapt today, but we gave them 30 to 60 days to acclimate and told them that, we cannot, no matter what your production is, we can't have everybody on the team that's not eating, living, and breathing our culture, what we stand for, and our non-negotiables. And a lot of our you know, non-negotiables were live with integrity with everything that you do, um, to be coachable, train daily. Um, so that was something that we really implemented where every day we would train at 9 a.m. with our team. We would break. We'd do midday training. We would role play. And uh, we, we also put no negativity assigns all around our entire operation. And, uh, you know, throughout the office, we made, it, we, we made it a point where negativity wasn't allowed. And that doesn't mean they couldn't come in and have a bad day because we understand people got things going on in life. And we always had a family atmosphere where they could come in to our office and we're going to treat them like they're a kid of mine. That's, that's how I viewed all my people in my agency. They're like, my children that I wanted to help grow and develop them. And, you know, they knew the door was always open, but one thing we wouldn't tolerate, there was a terminal offense that if they came in and we caught them perpetuating negativity and like, what does that look like? Right. What that looks like is 
the leads are bad. Like this, you know, this sucks. Like they're, they're, they're perpetuating negative, um, you know, negativity to maybe new team members that's negatively impacting down and bringing everybody down instead of raising everybody up. So we said we had a zero tolerance from that. We took these non-negotiables, created the culture that I wanted to live and breathe. My name was on the door after all. And I'm like, this is the way things are going to be, period. And we had to separate some of our best people. But the interesting thing was, is when we separated a couple of our best people at the time, productivity started to go up. We started to do more with less because then everybody else embraced the culture and we created this brand. We created this culture that became magnetic. We started to you know, put things on social media, videos of us having morning meetings. When we did our interviews, we brought them into our training in the morning. We brought them into um, our morning meetings or mid-afternoon meetings, knowing that, hey, you know what? If somebody's scared off by this, they don't belong in our organization. What I want, though, is the right person that comes into this, and they get pretty darn excited. They get excited about what they hear. They get excited about the training. And oh, by the way, they get excited about one of the best opportunities in America that, you know, we felt at the time we did, nobody in the area could compete with in terms of training, coaching, mentorship to help them get there. We had a hierarchy where they could come in, start as a telemarketer, go up to a salesperson, go up to a senior salesperson with extra licenses, go to a team lead where they're leading, leading people and running like a mock $3 million agency inside of our business because all those people were on development plans to become agency owners. And because we fostered that type of culture, that uh, we started at one point to become magnetic where top talent started coming to us rather than us chasing them. Great, great point, Dave. Thank you. Um, can I interject real quick? I feel Absolutely. Like we're just talking over you, Brett. I hope you're okay with that. But that idea of, of having a person who aspires to be an agent one day run a mock agency within your agency is absolutely brilliant because you can hold that person to a whole other standard as far as what they're producing on a daily basis, how they're showing up. And then you're leveraging them to get better performance from the other team members. So you can have Brett, the team lead, be in charge of two or three salespeople. And they're the, now Brett is in charge of following yep. up with them on a daily basis every few hours on their numbers. I thought that was absolutely brilliant. No, thank you. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just to kind of piggyback off of that, you know, reviewing histori historical turnover and building that effective hiring plan into your budget. So just, you know, history has a habit of repeating itself. Let's look to that to guide us. We can use those as our best practices when planning your budget to proactively hire based off of your prior year's results. guys i'm having a bit of an issue with scrolling through here give me one second i'm just going to stop the share and reload it I apologize. as you're as you're pulling that up brett i just want to share some real quick a few years ago i was working with a handful of agents that uh wanted me to help them hire great team members. And what I did was I posted the jobs for them. I had candidates apply. I did the phone interviews and I had some help with that. We would, we would eliminate 90% of the candidates, the B and C players. We only had the very best people who were, who were uh, applying sit down with the agency owner for in-person interview. And the feedback that I would get from agents is that they would say, Vlad, these are the best candidates I've ever had sit in front of me for in-person interview. How did you find them? Um, but then shortly after, I would follow up with the agent and they would tell me, yeah, so-and-so didn't end up taking the job with me. And I kept getting that over and over and over again. And what I found is that it's not just a matter of finding these great candidates. It's about selling them on the opportunity to work in your agency. So just because you show them a great office and you show them a good comp plan doesn't mean they're going to pick you versus the agent down the street. These three C's that you talk of, the competitive comp, culture, and career growth, those things need to be reinforced in the phone interview and the in-person interview over and over again. So uh, hopefully that clears that 
part up and how um, and, and that helped me uh, quite a bit. So once I started incorporating that and started training agents on those things, uh, I realized that, you know what, this is just taking way too much of my time to train agents how to build a culture. And I ended up stop. I stopped doing that service for those reasons. So that's why I like uh, working with guys like you, because you you share those things before people even enroll with you guys. Um, so that they have the, the base down before they even reach out to you guys. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And sorry for the technical issues there. We have a new uh, sharing platform open, so we shouldn't have that happen again. Um, just to, you know, kind of keep that train rolling with how to keep effectively screening those candidates, you can leverage assessments and aptitude tests. And Vlad, I know this is something that you're really big on and you talk a lot about in your training. And I think that this can be another arrow in your quiver to help vet those candidates once you've honed in on your top talent. And we've got a lot of individuals that implement these strategies and they really, you know, pride themselves on those assessments to make those hiring decisions. And I just wanted to speak to this real quick because I think it's very important to know when to implement these, we really found that timing is key. Um, when we're having a candidate come into the process and they're looking at this potential opportunity, we don't want to start giving them assessments too early on in the process. And I heard a great analogy to this from uh, somebody earlier today. You know, think if you were going on a date with a person on the first date, you're probably not going to ask them their plans for future children. Now, maybe a couple dates into that, we could start having those conversations. But we tend to find that find that same thing with the candidates. We don't want to give them the, the aptitude and assessments too early on in the process because it doesn't paint the whole picture. And a lot of candidates feel like it may not be the only light that they should be painted in. So they definitely have their place. With our process, we help to leverage your time and get you in front of a lot of quality people and then hone in on those top choices. Typically what we suggest, if you are going to implement or leverage the assessment and aptitudes that you have those in place for those one-on-one -on -one in-person interviews. So once you've honed in on your top choices, having a workstation set up to get administer that assessment to your top three or four candidate choices is gonna help you narrow that down even more and make a, a logical decision on that. So I think that those are super essential. We just need to know the timing of those. And we tend to find that once we're you know closer to our decision, decision-making process, those are when they're going to offer the most benefit. We also ask that, you know, you think about leveraging group interviews to find the right candidates. So group interviews can serve your valuable time. They also create an interesting dynamic that highlights top talent and weeds out the rest. So being able to compare those candidates in real time, their tonality, their energy level, or more importantly, their skill set and their experience is how we can identify top talent very quickly and eliminate those folks that maybe we're saying the right things, but the vibe is just a little bit off. And conduct multiple interviews and compare. So implementing people on your team, right? They're gonna have to work with these folks every single day. So pull two or three of your top or trusted team members from your organization and pull them into that interview. Have them interview the same candidate one-on-one -on -one and have them compare notes. Make it a team discussion about who becomes part of your culture and your team. And then leveraging that technology to assist in the hiring process, leveraging you know, uh, strategic technologies such as dedicated HR platforms, virtual interview solutions, and also training platforms. <clears throat> Next up, we wanna keep it simple, right? The hiring process doesn't need to be overly complicated. The more barriers to entry and obstacles that we put in front of a candidate, the more likely it's gonna detract away from the quality of the position or actually the value of the position in the candidate's eyes. So just having a streamlined process with no excessive steps or hoops to jump through is gonna give them an easier path to join the uh, company. Asking creative interview questions. So, you know, if you've got a ton of experience interviewing, you probably got some great questions. Here at Team Hired, we have what we call our best practice questions. These are extremely thought provoking. We want to see how these candidates can think on their feet under pressure. So it's our responsibility if you do decide to move forward with us that we bring those questions to the table and we have a very uh, thorough and concise format to be able to deliver that, which Andy's going to talk about in just a moment here. I would also suggest that you have them work a day in the life to ensure it's a good fit. You know, have those same two or three uh, members that interviewed them, walk them through a day in the life of what it's like to be an insurance agent. See if this is something that they're cut out for. See if it's something that interests them, that gets them excited to Dave's point earlier. 
And then having a clear, concise offer letter. Complicated offer letters can create confusion around possible compensation. If you need a math degree to figure out what you can bring home each week in compensation, that's going to detract away from the opportunity as well too, or the perceived value of the opportunity. So having a clear and concise example of, hey, if you hit 100% of our goal, this is our bare minimum, this is what we need you to hit every month, this is what you can expect to make. If you hit 150% of goal, this is what you can expect to make. And if you are an outlier, a top performer, 200% over goal, this is what you can expect to make. So now you have a good, better, and best case scenario, which allows the candidate to easily digest what they could potentially make in income. Then I believe we have one more slide and we're gonna turn things over to Andy. So once we found this person, you know, retaining them is going to be a huge challenge as well. So some guidance I can give you there. You want to have a program in place for leadership development within your organization. I know Insurance Sales Lab offers some great sales training. So if we're looking to grow these salespeople, look to Insurance Sales Lab. Long-term career development for the individual. Everybody wants to know that they're not walking into a new position and hitting that proverbial glass ceiling. So as Dave mentioned, and he, I always refer back to him because he was one of the best I've ever seen at this, painting a long-term opportunity picture of what's in store for this individual. If they're willing to come in and work their butt off every single day, what does the long-term economic you know, factors look like for this individual? And I can and actually also, speak on that real quick. Yes, right? please do, do Dave. So this was something, again, real important in our organization, what we did with our team members, because I think too, too often what we do when we're managing our team, we're managing the number, right? Like, why don't you have the dials in? Why don't you have enough quotes in? Why don't you have your sales in, right? And that number can mean different things to different people. So what we did is we got down to the root of, because, you know, after all, everybody in our organization, they're like family. We truly cared about them. We got down to the root of what are their goals and how can we align them with ours? What's most important to them from a personal standpoint? in a professional standpoint, and how can we take people? Because I found the average person maybe didn't have goals. They didn't have the right goals. They didn't have them set right. And we started doing vision boards with our team where we got together as a group and as a team building exercise, we'd get together off work, pay them, come in, have some fun, build a vision board and figure out what are your personal goals? What are your professional goals? And a lot of them, it could be things like, I want to put my kid through college. I want to buy that new home. I want to buy the new, that, that new car. I want to go on vacation because I've never been able to do it before. From a professional standpoint, I want to be a maybe in a leadership role. I want to be an agency manager and I want to own an agency. So I was like, great, we're going to help you get there. And if you're truly serious about it, give me permission to hold you at the highest level of accountability to do that. And we would get permission from them. I'm like, all right, we're all in. Now, when we're having those conversations or maybe somebody's having an off day, an off week, they're not doing the activity they need to. They're not making the dials. They're not making the quote or they're just mailing it in. Like they're just you know, barely showing up. It wouldn't be about the number the conversation would be. Is The conversation would be the reminder is you gave me permission to hold you accountable and you're here eight hours a day anyways and I'm not going to allow you to operate at anything less than your best because is it fair to come in and not operate at your best and allow your kids to not have that college education? Allow your family to not have that home that you so deeply desire not get that car that you so deservingly should be driving to work every single day when you're here eight hours a day. Let's go all in every day, every hour of the day while we're here so we can make great things happen and I'm gonna hold you at, at your best. From a professional standpoint, all of our team leads that were on development plans to become their own agency owners. And again, this ties into the staffing because we this is our best way to retain people. And once we've hired them, but from a professional standpoint, you know, we would talk about with them, we would treat them like a peer. I wouldn't treat them like an employee. I had a higher level expectation. Not only did you have to perform from a sales standpoint or a service standpoint, but I expect you to be coming in and emulating as if you were me. So when I'm not there, you need to be reinforcing the culture. You need to be the culture police. You need to be leading team meetings. You need to be stepping up and living above and beyond your job responsibilities because by acting that way today is going to get you to where you want to go tomorrow. And if you can't operate that way in a safe environment here, when you go out to the wolves and start your own agency, you're going to fail and I'm not going to allow you to fail. So all conversations were goal driven. They're around their purpose, around their passion. And it was never about managing a number, never about managing profits, never about managing something that was self-interest for me. 
It was about managing the things that would get them to where they needed to go that ultimately by putting them first, got me where I needed to go. Thank you so much, Dave. Appreciate you sharing that. That's uh, very, very insightful. So just to kind of wrap things up on some of the, you know, ways that we can effective always be, always be hiring, um, we do have, you know, a plan in place for employee training. So whether they, you feel like you've got a good program to get that person up and running, um, Andy's going to take things over and he's going to speak to our program here in a second. And I'm also very excited to share with you a very uh, interesting new solution where we are helping to, you know, train and onboard new hires faster than ever. So with that, Andy, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great, I'll unmute myself. And I, I think this is the part in the presentation where you got to get up out of your desk and do some jumping jacks and get the blood flowing again. So good to good to be with everyone today. And, you know, I, I'm going to be running everyone through a, a 30,000 foot view of our solution and, and the team hired solution to duplicate a lot of what Dave and Brett have hit on today um, from you know, a consulting perspective and working out these processes. I'm sure some of you are sitting here thinking there's some of these things you already do. You maybe heard some things that you'd like to be doing, but you don't know exactly how to implement them. So I'm going to be running through where we address that with Team Hired and how we're helping agencies really refine their processes and, and adopt a lot of these ways of thinking into the way they do business. And also just running you through our actual hiring solution as well. So, you know, just to kind of kick things off here, when we talk about this compensation, the culture and the career path, a lot of times people hear that for the first time and they love the idea and it makes sense to them, but they don't know exactly how to, how to roll it into their processes. So included with anything and everything that we do as an organization, not only do we spend the time in, you know, a, an actual onboarding type fashion, making sure that we recap on this, remind you of it, but we also have some additional resources that I've found really valuable for agency owners. We've got an online database in video format with a lot of these topics and the ins and outs. And, you know, it's not just compensation, culture, and career path. We've got a lot more on there as well, like how to conduct final interviews, how to follow your gut in an interview, um, a lot of the processes. But, you know, you get those resources, but you get one-on-one -on -one support as well. So any anytime that we bring on a client at Team Hired, we want to treat them and, you know, treat each other as if we were inside of your business. We're really looking to become partners instead of vendors. And the way we see that is we're, we're going to be there to hold your hand through the process and, and work things out. So whether that means we dig in on a screen share and go through a compensation plan and help refine it to a point that it's presentable to the candidates, or whether we have a tough conversation about culture, or career path, and, and work out something that you can implement with your next candidates, that's exactly you know what, what we're here for. But when we look at our actual processes, one of the things that stuck out to me long before I was even at Team Hired so my initial impression was that Team Hired was going to be one of these ten or twenty thousand dollar solutions out there in the hiring space, and that's a lot of what you run into. Companies that come in and they say, "Great, we'll help you in outsourcing your hiring efforts," but in general, they'll charge twenty percent of base compensation. They'll, you know, put some sort of a uh, a minimum expectation on what that base looks like, usually forty to fifty thousand, and before you know it, you can be out eight or nine thousand dollars without any help on the structure or the organization, no help on long-term retention. And there really wasn't a person walking you through and making sure that not only did they help you hire somebody, but is that person going to be with you a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. So when you look at the way that you know our pricing is set up, I want to pull this up right out of the gate and bring everyone out of mystery. You know, our, our pricing starts at uh, a price that is just a fraction of what traditional headhunting would be, which is 2497 for our one hire or 10 candidate package which is called a bronze and even today you know uh, I'll, I'll go over some some specials uh just for this group specifically vlad that that we've put together and dave has approved for this phone call but you know being able to come out with a couple thousand dollar spend you could literally use our program to go hire four people at the cost that you would you know traditionally go through a traditional headhunter and spend eight grand with them and then that way there, if one of them, something goes sideways six months from now, they're no longer with you. You're able to build up that bench of people without breaking the bank. So our price point is really meant to come in as a, a hybrid price model that, you know, not only takes into account all the job ad costs and all of the time to go through the process I'm about to show you, but it's you buying your time back, right? It's you saying, I'm going to have a, a company that's in the space 
take off my plate a lot of the things uh, that I would be doing inside the hiring process. So the impact, the direct impact is if we free you up, let's say 15 additional hours in your, your month that you can then spend coaching and mentoring your existing team members, building out new processes, building new marketing campaigns, working with, with corporate, uh, all of those you know, revenue generating activities. Now you are freed up additional 15 hours, which means that your impact on the organization as a whole is almost incalculable. I don't know if that number is 10 grand or 20 grand or 50 grand in impact, but you know, we, we really like to free up the owner's time as Brett and Dave both spoke to. Now, before I get into any of these uh, boot camps or subscriptions, I want to just break down for you what is the team hired process and, and how does it kind of duplicate what we've gone through today? So when you come on board as a, as a new hire or a, a new hire, a new candidate, uh, uh, you know, client with team hire, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to run you through sort of a best practices uh, interview, sort of a questionnaire and, and figure out the way that you're currently doing things. And we will raise our hand right out of the gate. If we notice anything that might be causing you pain in your current hiring process or might cause you pain down the road. So first and foremost, before we even exchange money or time, we're going to say, hey, we would love this information so that we can actually dig in and, and be that partner that's not asking you for money. We're asking you for information. What, what are you currently doing? What's working? What's not working? And then right out of the gate, here's how we think we can help. Here's how we think it's going to go down to be the best practice for you. And we see that as our responsibility, right? Not just to grab a credit card and say, welcome aboard, thank you for your payment, let's get started. But to, as a true partner say, well, if you're coming to us, obviously you have a need in hiring. There might be some things that need improvement. And let's, let's take the time up front to actually investigate that before we ever start putting candidates in front of you. Because quite frankly, we could put 6,542 people in front of you over the next year. And if the processes aren't refined, if there's a hole in the bucket, the water is just going to keep leaking through. So the first thing we come in, we take a look at everything, make sure it, it looks good. And then at that point, we, we bring you through into an onboarding. And, you know, we go through the three C's. We go through our process again and make sure that you're ready to go because it is very fast paced. It's about three times as fast as your traditional hiring process. We want to make sure that you're ready for that. And then we actually assign you a, a dedicated account manager. So you're not getting thrown to five or six different people. You're not having to figure out who to contact. You have one point person who has a tremendous amount of experience running literally thousands of interviews, working with thousands of candidates, you know, and they've spent time in the saddle hiring at, at a more frequent rate, rate, frequent rate probably than most agency owners. And that's a tremendous value when you can get a second set of eyes on candidates, when you've got somebody to save you time in the process and do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. That's what they're there for. And, you know, we're even at the point now where we have clients that have come back and continued to scale their agency with us, and they're doing a fifth or a sixth or an eighth job. And they've built this kind of one-to-one -one relationship with their team hired account manager, where they can always come back and have that reliable source that they trust that knows their business. But what they're not doing is having to go spend five or six or seven grand a month in payroll to have a year round recruiter inside their office, right? And we want to give you that in-house experience without you having to pay 60, 70 grand a year in, in payroll to an in-house recruiter because not, not all of us need a, a year-round recruiter for 70 grand a year salary in the office, right? We might just need to hire two people right now. Maybe a couple months from now, we need to add a couple more. So we're that solution that you can lean on, have a dedicated recruiter and, and actually, you know, get a consistent process from us when the need arises. Now, what happens once we've onboarded you and once we've introduced you to your account manager? Very next step is we need to cast a very wide net. And you know the way we look at it, quantity is going to equal quality. A lot of times people are just looking at a trickle of candidates. They, they post up a, a couple job ads maybe, they run a few dollars into it, they get maybe you know, 10, 20 applicants, they start making phone calls and all of a sudden, a lot of applicants aren't picking up the phone. People are ghosting them on their interviews. And you have all of these points through the hiring process. And I'm sure everyone on this phone call has experienced that at one point or another, that the number of applicants you got was not equal to the number of people that you actually interviewed. So our strategy is going to be very aggressive. Go out. We post in multiple places, start gathering a, a, a very wide array of candidates, and then taking them through our internal filters. And 
you know, here, here's the big sticking point. And I heard this a couple of times from you, Dave, and, and from you, Brett, as well, that we're in a landscape right now that is more competitive than, than maybe any time in the last 10 years. You've got companies around you right now that are hiring in a way they've, they've never done before. They're moving faster. They're more aggressive. Sometimes they're willing to up their offers. So it's really important that if you work with any company, let alone team hired, that you have a competitive advantage as an employer. And that competitive advantage right now is speed. It's much like the real estate market, right? Where if a house goes on the market, depending on where you're at in the country right now, it's probably under contract within 24 to 48 hours. Candidates are no different. We've got a, a huge influx of employers. We've got a minimized list of, of candidates willing to do this type of work. And what do you get with a huge amount of demand and a very small amount of supply? You get a very narrow window to grab the attention of the good candidates and actually have an opportunity for them to actually come work for you. So most of the agencies, I would assume, around everyone on this phone call are running the traditional playbook. They are you know, making phone calls, maybe running a phone interview. They're inviting people in one by one. And by the time that they've seen 10 or 15 candidates, it's taken them a couple of weeks to do that. And they're having candidates drop off because they're taking other job offers. They're having candidates no show interviews because they weren't able to engage fast enough with the company. Yet they've got six other companies saying, hey, come work for us. Signing bonus, we'll take your interview today. So what has Team Hire done to short, shortcut that? Well, we've come up with something that we call video-based group interviewing. And this was, Dave, I hope, I hope you don't mind me saying this. This, this was almost done by accident. Uh, I was a client of Team Hired before I worked here. And at that time, Team Hired was sending large groups of people to the office. And I'm going to be honest, it worked great for us. We found our, our top sales producer in one event, uh, total A player. If there was something beyond A, she was beyond A. And this was after me pedaling my wheels for a month, not finding anybody. But one thing I was a little overwhelmed by was this large group of candidates in the office. I didn't know how to run a group interview. And in addition to that, COVID hit. So the idea of 10 or 15 people piling in your office with masks and the six, six foot social distancing rules was, was pretty astounding. So when COVID hit, team hired transition to leverage technology, just like Brett was talking about. How do we use the current situation and make the best of it? And while I think, I'm assuming here, Dave, this was meant to be maybe a Band-Aid just in the time being during COVID, it has become kind of the gold standard of, of the way that we do things and, and kind of quickly spreading to become the norm. Because when we implement this, what we're doing is we're taking the top echelon of candidates we, we've grabbed from the marketplace. We're inviting you, your account manager, and all of the candidates to one video-based group interview. This is live. So we get that question all the time. Is it live? Yes, it is live. I heard an agency owner yesterday say, so this is like the Hunger Games and the Brady Bunch combined. I said, if you want to put it like that, I guess so, right? But the point is we're engaging with these candidates using what people have gotten so used to, just you know, your, your Zoom, your WebEx, your Cisco. So people are used to this. And what we've found is when you put candidates in a group setting like this, it really exposes the good ones and the bad ones on kind of an even playing field. No longer are we sitting in a one-on-one -on -one interview, having a hard time comparing them to the last five candidates that met with us over the last week. The candidate that might've looked great in a one-on-one -on -one interview now is suddenly stacked up against all the other talent in the marketplace. And you might be able to weed them out a lot easier or the top talent on here is gonna shine. And so here's how it works. You come into this video-based group interview and your team hired account manager is with you and they'll typically intro you as the owner, as the manager, and give you the platform to say a few words about what makes the agency special, right? And, and some of these things we talked about that we coach you up ahead of time on, your, your compensation, your career path, right? Your culture, all of those things really matter. Maybe you are an agency that does something unlike anybody else around you, your involvement in community service, right? Or Maybe you've got some special programs inside that your current team members just absolutely love. Well, we kind of give you the platform to say, hey, we've been working with these candidates to this point. We're sort of passing the torch to you. Here's the platform. Give us a two-minute overview of, of what makes your agency amazing. And so you've had time to prepare for that. You give a nice two-minute overview, something like that. And then we take the reins back over and we run the whole interview for you. So going back to my experience with team hired initially was work fantastic, super fast, got a top producer, but I was a little uncomfortable running my own group interview. I had never done it before. But in this scenario, because it's being done virtually, 
you're getting a professional that's done this hundreds and hundreds of times walking in with a, a playbook of creative questions that touch on everything from objections to situational awareness to career path to personality. And they are trained to work this room in about a 45 minute period and really highlight people and you know put them on their toes, right? This is your hiring event. These are your candidates. You're gonna wanna know at the end of this call who's coming to your office, today, tomorrow, the next day, and who you're rejecting. And we're going to help you get there over about a 45 minute group interview that's conducted right in front of you live on the spot. While every other company around you is taking the next week, week and a half, playing phone tag with these candidates, trying to schedule them in for a, you know, one-on-one -on -one interview, yet Team Hired has gotten them in, done a group interview. You've walked away with your handful of top talent from that group, and we've helped schedule them into your office over the next 24 48 hours. So I know there's probably some moving pieces here and some questions that might come up, but before I kind of turn the microphone back over, one of the things that I do want to touch on is that we do have agencies on here, and I saw some in the comments at the beginning that are looking for eight people, 10 people, 15 people. You just bought a new book of business, right? Or you just started a, a scratch agency, or you came in and, and you grabbed a couple extra locations, and you know that your hiring need is not going to just be for one, one person or two people, but you're going to have a consistent hiring need. Well, we came up with a solution for that called Always Be Hiring. And Always Be Hiring is where we run the same process over and over and over again, but we set it up to either present you with an event every other week, or we can literally run an event every single week of the month for a long-term consistent basis at a fraction of the cost of what it would take you to do that internally, hiring your own in-house recruiter, training them, maybe getting them on your benefit plan, payroll, the liability of having your own recruiter in-house, all of those things are sort of taken off your plate and you can flip the switch on, you can flip the switch off and it gives you the ability for, for some long-term recruiting efforts. Now, I do wanna kind of turn it over to either Brett or Dave uh, because they've been pretty close to this process on an extension of this process that's relatively new for Team Hired and we call it the pre-licensing bootcamp. So I don't know, Dave or, or Brett, if you kind of want to touch on it, and I'll pull up this menu right here uh, to show everyone on this green line what that is. But can either one of you kind of speak to the yeah. problem that that solves in the agency? Yeah, absolutely. So we came up with uh, this boot camp because, again, it was another problem we discovered during the process is like people are trying to get people licensed. They would bring them in. And one of the barriers of entry that we found, too, is they wanted to get people licensed in advance. And when we were doing our exit interviews with candidates, that was one of the things that was getting in the way, why they were choosing other offers, because, you know, I think there's a statistic out there that says, what is it, like 70% of Americans, they might not have a thousand dollars in their checking account for an emergency, right? So now when you're telling these people to go get licensed, here's a book, go get it done. They're looking at it from a perspective, well, I might not get a paycheck for a month and a half or two months, and how am I going to survive for my family? And if another opportunity comes along, they're going to get me right in and I'm going to see my paycheck two weeks from now. That's what was causing a lot of people to, um, you know, lose these great candidates. And one of the biggest fear factors you saw, well, what if I invest in them and they, you know, they don't work out, they don't pass their tests in 60 days. So one of the things that we had already developed was an acceleration process is to get them through more times than not in 15 days, worst case 21, by having just accountability. Because we found the missing component was, you know, agency owners didn't have time to micromanage candidates. So it was like, go figure it out on your own. A lot of candidates learn differently. It's not that they couldn't pass the test. They just learn differently. Not everybody reads a book. Not everybody learns visually. And um, there was just lack of accountability. Like, what do I do today? What do I do tomorrow? What am I going to be held to the fire for? So we developed basically a 14-day process and curriculum where it's our boot camp. We're in our pre-licensing boot camp. It includes the licensing. So we do the online licensing course that they have. They come in day one. They meet with our boot camp instructor. And we have a lot of fun during the process. We do incentives. We do things to keep them engaged. The morning of, we're doing an orientation. We're setting expectations. After the orientation, we basically dive into material, what we want them to study for the next three to four hours of that day. Midday, after they're done studying, after lunch, everybody breaks together again. The instructor goes over the progress, compares everybody's progress, asks questions, find out what's getting in the way, recognizes the people that are doing really well through the process, sets further expectations, has another, it's three check-ins a day, has another check-in at close, assigns them homework and basically tells them, be like, listen, not every agency owner invests in you and pays you to train. So because of that, what your agency owner requires is 
you invest in yourself for these short two weeks, two weeks of short-term pain or long-term gain um, to make sure without a doubt you pass this in 15 days. If you take shortcuts, you don't do the homework, you don't do these things, you're probably not going to pass it. So therefore, in the progress reports, one of the things that we have to do in this program is report back to your agency owner. And we put together a colorful one page sheet every single day of what they did, their progress and where they're at in the course throughout that entire two weeks. And then have their, you know, try to have their test more times than not scheduled on that 15th day so they can go right into it. Now, for whatever reason, somebody misses that, they can come back for a refresher at no cost. And then a week later, go back and take that. And we even offer a guarantee because we want to, you know, we want to make sure we over deliver. That's a big commitment that we have for all of our customers is, you know, fanatical customer experience. So for whatever reason, even if, even if it's not our own fault, you have somebody that doesn't pass that, somebody falls off, we'll allow you to replace that one time, either with the same candidate or put a new candidate through the course again for that two weeks uh, as your replacement guarantee that we do during the process. So that's what we came up with. And we've actually been, you know, our goal is, is, you not get not get them through the course guaranteed because there's no guarantees on anything. It's dependent on the candidate, but reduce the life cycle in which it takes them to pass the test by 30, 40%. If we can reduce that life cycle at minimum, hit that bar of 30, 40% that it takes them to pass the test. You know, what does that savings look like if you're saving a month of payroll? You're saving, um, you know, all that time and that lost opportunity cost. And that that's just a little bit further inside about what our pre-licensing boot camp looks like. Awesome. Awesome. Thank, thank you for bringing in the context from, from your experience. I think that, that really helps kind of connect the dots. So, you know, I just kind of want to wrap things up on, on this end of the presentation on, on the team hired piece and, you know, let everyone know that Brett and I bugged Dave and said, can we do something special for these guys? At the, yeah, at special the applies for all packages. Oh, for all packages. Okay. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. So, you know, basically on all the packages at the, at the bronze level, uh, we're doing $500 off of this price point and a free pre-licensing voucher. Uh, and then Dave, does that go up on the silver and the gold to two vouchers, three vouchers or? Uh, yes, we can do that. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So, you know, that's some, some additional value that, that we wanted to add in on, on, on today. So you say that again, just so it's clear. Um, how does that work? They get five hundred dollars off the price on the bronze, on, on the, the bronze, bronze, yep. And they also get the five hundred dollar boot camp included, so they're saving. About it's a pre licensing voucher, but if they wanted to upgrade to the boot camp, they can do that. So basically, it's just the course for them to go out and do that um, on their own to get licensed. And then if they wanted that, it's basically uh, it'd be a four hundred dollar upgrade for existing people getting the package to put them through the boot camp. Do you want people to go to teamhired.com, fill out the form on the on the site, or call a number? What do you want them to do if they want to reach out? Yeah, yeah they absolutely. can go right to teamhired.com, and you just mention in the notes there, you know, that they are on the webinar, and then we'll make sure to you know give everybody, you know, we always try to do it, but white glove VIP service, and uh, uh, make sure that that discounts on them. Andy and I will also be sending out our direct contact information here in the chat boxes. So keep an eye out for that. If you uh, prefer, you can reach out to us directly and uh, we're looking forward to talking with you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's do some Q and a here. If you guys may. Um, Absolutely. So first question is Dave or Andy, whoever wants to speak about this, how do you justify this cost? Some people are looking at this and saying 2000 bucks per, per team member. I don't know if I can afford that. What do you say to that agent? Yeah, so I mean, I could, I could answer that. So, you know, first and foremost, I think when, you know, anybody that's looked into a recruiter, you know, we typically come in in comparison to the average recruiter that we get the job done at a third of the time and a third of the cost, you know, first and foremost. But I think what a lot of times people don't factor in, you know, you might look at that, you know, $2,500, but what have you been doing now? And a lot of the times we're talking to somebody they've been going for six months, they've been investing five, 10 hours a week. You know, what's the value of your time and the lost opportunity cost there? They're burning money on Indeed over and over again. Every time they do it, it's a five to eight hundred dollar expenditure that you know kind of results into it just just evaporates. And what we found when when you add up all those different expenses in itself, that's usually two, three to four x what the cost of our services are. But then what a lot of times people don't consider is what is the lost opportunity cost by not having that rock star in your organization in the next thirty days. So you go six months, you're now on track to. Maybe your book's not growing the way you want it to. There's, you know, lost profits. 
you're not hitting monthly bonuses, and then maybe you're not on track to hit that year-end bonus. And, and what is the price tag to that? When you collectively add all that together, um, it's usually a substantially higher cost. And in, in, in we've, even, we've even worked with agencies that really got their process dialed in, and they just relinquished it over to us, and they have us do it month in and month out because you know, focus on what you can control, right? Because you got so many different hats to wear as an agency owner, as a business owner, and keep the main thing, the main thing, drive revenue and client experience. And if you can outsource the rest for similar, if not, you know, lesser cost than anything else, that's what we always did in our career. And I think, you know, last but not least, one of the things showing on the screen, we got over 400 video positive testimonials from agents that we've worked with uh, around the country, because it's our mission that, uh, you know, we want to over deliver for everybody we work with and provide provide what we call a fanatical client experience inside of the hiring process. Awesome. Uh, there are a few questions coming in, uh, but one thing I want to add on to that: if you hire the wrong person and you pay them twenty, say twenty five hundred bucks before payroll tax, before the cost of leads, before systems that you pay for, like your CRM, let's just say it's twenty five hundred bucks. They stay with you for two months. Oh, that's five thousand dollars that you wasted. You've trained them, you've worked with them, you spent all this time, and they don't make it after their second month. That's $5,000 wasted. The nice thing about what you guys do is that you don't just pick, uh, you don't interview whoever applies. There's about 100 or more people that apply on a monthly basis. And one of the questions was, where, how do people uh, apply? Where do you get these applicants? You guys uh, contact these candidates. You make sure they understand that you need to get licensed. You will be making phone calls. This is an insurance sales position, if that's the position you're hiring for. And you have a quota to hit. So you establish the right expectations right off the bat. And after the candidate has agreed to all those terms, only then can they show up to the uh, virtual interview. So you're disqualifying 80% of the candidates right off the bat. And a lot of that too, we're doing in that group interview process, we're having them in there and then only bringing the best of the best into a one-on-one interview. So the agency owner, which we schedule on your calendar and we'll get enough one-on-one interviews to result into that hire. So again, the agency owner is only spended best with the top of the top. They're meeting with them either in that second interview virtually or in their office. And then that's where we recommend have your assessments right then and there. But we're doing the vetting with you and we allow the agency owner to be as involved in the process or not. If you want us just to take the entire lead, what a lot of people do, even the best of the best, they sit back and take notes that they couldn't do on their own before while we're facilitating that group interview. They're taking notes, finding out who they like. We compare notes at the very end of it and decide who's going to go on their calendar on a one-on-one basis. And then we'll keep running those events to get to, uh, you know, to basically get to that number to the, the person that they're going to offer. Awesome. Uh, one of the questions is, where do you post your jobs? Where are you finding these candidates? Because you guys handle all of that. The agent is not yep. involved. In that yeah, process. so we do all that, put up the ads up for it. And I mean, the answer to that is everywhere and everywhere. So we're, I like the, you know, coin the term like omnipresence, just be out there and cast a wide net and bring as many people in as possible. And then just vet them through. Like, you know, it's, it's a numbers game. We know that like clockwork, we're in front of 10, 15 candidates. Like it's going to develop a rock star. And just through that, you know, kind of law of large numbers that we got going through there and our process to really hone in on the right people, um, it, it's worked very well and it's cut down the time exponentially. Uh, Pam is asking, if we find a candidate, so she finds a candidate on her own, can she include that candidate in the group interview? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we, you know, we encourage that if somebody's got them, feel free to put them through our, you know, our pipeline and we have you know, an account manager that's working with you is a dedicated liaison that's a recruiter helping you throughout the entire process. But we also have um, a large team that's dialing out to these candidates too. So if you got additional candidates we want to put in the pipeline, we'll dial them on your behalf and schedule them into into these interviews. Perfect. Uh, Let's bring it first full circle. And then I have a few other uh, questions that popped up. Uh, Two candidates or two A players in the next 30 days. How do we go about doing that? Let's say I signed up today or I'm an agency owner, I'm looking to hire two people ASAP. Today is uh, Wednesday, June 16th, when we're doing this live call. Um, I pay for the two candidate, and the, the, the silver plan. Uh, what are the next steps? When is the first group interview done? And how soon can I 
start. Yeah. So that, that 30 days is basically from the point we start your first group interview to, to finish. And that's, you know, essentially up to four events. Um, it typically takes to do that. So we're running that weekly event. So what it looks like when you start with us, you know, we have a conversation to make it to fit because what's important to us is we don't want to just provide a service and sell it to somebody if it's not the right fit. Right. And this isn't the right fit for everybody. And what I mean by that is sometimes we'll talk to somebody and, you know, if the, if the pay is in line, you're only trying to pay somebody maybe $24,000 a year, or there's the, not the right career path in place. Some of these different things we will be open and honest and say, Hey, there's some changes that we'll need to make here for this to work. And if you don't make those changes, we just want to be transparent and let you know that this process isn't going to work. And, you know, we don't want to take your money. But if you got the right hiring foundation in place, we'll put you through the onboarding, get you running, get you assigned to an account manager. And then usually within the week after that onboarding is scheduled is your first hiring event. And then uh, within that four weeks of hiring events is, you know, typically on average is when we'll, we'll have those uh, hiring expectations met for the average client. And what you can expect is maybe you show up on a Friday night, 5 p.m., that's your time slot, and you're dealing with Brittany, for example. Brittany's on that call. She's raring to go, you know, real professional. She opens it up, does a, you know, kind of an open intro with everybody, introduction, and leads that entire meeting. So you, you just have to show up and you can be involved as much or as little as you want to during the process. And that'll kind of work like clockwork until we get you to your hire or your number of candidates. Awesome. Uh, a question here on the leadership position. This is from what you guys discussed earlier, where you promote one of your team members into a lead position, where now they're running an agency within an agency. Uh, do you pay them differently as far as a new business commission as an override in renewals? How do you handle that? Yeah, so we would uh, pay them differently, but the expectations aren't different. So what we would tell them is the price of admission going into this role, if you're a sales professional or a service professional, is results can't dip. If anything, we want them to increase because one of the best ways I've seen people lead teams is the way I did it when I opened up. I was my own best salesperson and I led the charge. And you know, I, I like this term called shadow of a leader, right? People I've found over the course of my career will do as you do before they do as you say. So you can tell them, hey, go do 50 items, go do this and that. But if they don't have somebody that's living that, emulating that, eating, living and breathing that inside of the organization, it's tough because seeing is believing. And I like to say, what type of shadow am I casting as a leader? And that's the same thing with our leaders that we expect. We expect them to operate up here and, it, and really cast the right shadow. So their numbers cannot dip because that's what sets the tone for their team of two to three people. And then in addition to their own compensation, because we know they're going to be doing some different, maybe coaching, training, accountability, jumping in the sales to help close deals for people. We would put bonuses in place based off of production of the team. So the average person on the team was doing maybe 30 units a piece or X amount of revenue, each team member on average, they maybe get a thousand dollar bonus for the month. If they hit this tier, they maybe get a $1,500 bonus. And then maybe they can go up to a $2,000 bonus based off their performance and their team's performance. And the way we hold them accountable too is like, listen, you need to show us you can get this done and demonstrate profound consistency. Not just do it for a week, not do it for a month, but I want to see you perform like six months in a row where you're crushing it. Because if you can't do it in a safe environment inside of like my office, how are you going to do it out in the real world when the real world hits you in the face and you're getting hit with a fire hose of, you know, 10 different things are coming your way as a business owner. Like, so if you can't do it here, you can't do it there. And I'm not going to put my stamp of implorable of you, you know, getting the keys of the kingdom, opening up your own agency until you can show a really profound level of proficiency when it comes to leadership in performing inside of a safe environment. Love that. Uh, when it comes to the comp plan, I have a comp plan that I'll include below uh, the replay of this video so that uh, people can see my comp plan. Do you have a comp plan that you share uh, publicly with agents you guys work with? Yeah, so we have a, a model comp plan when people ask for it, like is a best practice. We don't say, you know, it's something you have to use, but something that's worked in the past for us. You know, one thing that's worked well for me is keeping it simple. It's all on one page. Keep a lot of the maybe fine details that you want to hit home in a comp plan inside of the employee manual. So on day one, when they start, have them sign that. But in terms of simplicity purposes, when they're going home to their spouse, keep it simple. This is the role. This is the expectation. This is the pay. And here's a few examples. If you come in and you're hitting just minimum performance, which I'm sure, you know, the reason I'm hiring you is not because I'm hiring a minimum performer. 
and you don't sound like a minimum performer, are you? Okay, great. Well, if you are a minimum performer, this is what you can expect to make on a monthly annual basis with base and commission. If you come in and you're average and you're performing average across the board, this is what you expect to make on a monthly in, in annual basis. And if you come in and you're a superstar and don't limit yourself to your own agency when defining this, who's the number one person in your state in a same similar ecosystem that's not going to cover off the ball? And that's the bar. That's like the high goal to hit. And maybe that's 100K, maybe that's 120K. I'm not sure what your market looks like, but if you come in and do that and just being transparent, you got to come in and actually just crush it and be relentless. You know, you can make well over six figures if you're doing that. And this is what it looks like on a monthly and high basis, but you get to pick your comp plan. And that's the beauty of this role. But you tell me, are you a minimum performer? Are you average? Or are you, you operate at a different level than most people? Love that. It forces them to pick one. And if they say, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty average, then you probably don't want to hire that person in the first place. Yep. Uh, people are asking, is there going to be a replay? Absolutely. Uh, any final thoughts on your end, Dave, Andy, or Brett, that you guys want to share before we wrap up? Yeah, I'd say great people don't cost money. If you find the right people, you know, never compromise. But if you find the right people, they just don't cost money in your organization. You know, one, one of the, the big things that you know, I had to get a real grasp on, you know, early on was understanding the lifetime value of the revenue that they're generating and the clientele they're generating. Sometimes we'll get into this mode where it's like, well, I only get paid 10%. How am I going to pay this person 70, 80 K a year, even if they're generating maybe $40,000 a month in premium. And I find that that scarcity mindset causes people to maybe underpay. But when you think about it, you're actually getting paid far more because and that person's probably doing some additional activities inside of your agency that's not revenue producing, but even though most of their activities are revenue producing, but let's say they even put up 40K. You're paying that person 70 to 80,000 a year to do that. And that equates out to maybe, let's say round number purposes, 7,000 a month. A lot of people say, well, I'm taking a $3,000 loss. Well, no, you're not. That's getting you on a trajectory to maybe hit that bonus, hit some other you know, different incentives that's going to help offset that. But if you're running at a 90% retention and that business is going to renew nine times, the loss lifetime value of that client, it's not $300, it's $2,700. And you just built a person, yes, they're getting paid 70,000 a year. But when you take and deduct the commission from that, that you got from that person, there's very a small differential that you're maybe taking a loss up front on. But that's the equivalent of maybe less than a half a multiple that you're buying business for into your agency. And if you can create a machine that churns out new business premium for less than a half a multiple or right around a half a multiple, like you got a pretty good operation, but it takes the right person to do that. You know, bad people are the wrong people. Now they cost money. They cost more money than like you could ever imagine because when somebody's coming in and they're not producing, a lot of times what they're also doing, that same type of person that doesn't have the capability or the know-how to produce, they're maybe impacting negatively some of the high performers in your organization and costing you way more than you can ever imagine. So the wrong person is going to cost you money in more ways than you'll ever know. But the right person and great people, they don't cost money. Hire as many of them as possible. Awesome. I uh, have a calculator that I built that demonstrates exactly what you just said, where you can compare someone who writes fifteen to 20000 in premium and you pay him 3% on the premium versus someone who writes 40000 in premium and you pay him 7% on that. Some people look at that and say, well, if I'm going to pay 10%, how can I afford to pay someone 7% plus their base? But when you look at the actual income that's generated from an agency on uh, month one, the six month renewal and uh, the one year renewal, you'll find that over the course of one year, the team member that you pay 7%, you're going to make significantly more on that person. And I uh, will share that calculator here shortly. I'm making some final tweaks on it so that everybody can play with it. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for hopping on this call. I appreciate no, it. Thank you for having us. We greatly appreciate it. And, you know, thank for everybody that, uh, that joined us today and everybody that stuck with us. And, you know, if there's any way we can serve anybody in this call and it doesn't have to be like, you know, you doing business with us, if there's any advice we can give, anything hiring process related or not. You know, I, I love serving agency owners. I've been in this business. I got a passion for it. Um, happy to happy to support any way I can. Again, even if it's outside of the, the the realm of hiring, and it's something else you heard on this call today. Cool. All right, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up, and we'll send out a replay here shortly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vlad. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank you. Thanks, Vlad. Thank you, everyone.